the federal government may neither issue directives requiring the states to even address particular problems, nor command the state's officers or those of their political subdivisions to administer or enforce a regulatory program, a federal regulatory program, left out federal. It matters not whether policy making is involved and no case by case weighing of the burdens or benefits is necessary because such commands are fundamentally incompatible with our constitutional system of dual sovereignty. Who's the other sovereign they're talking about? The states and the people. Because they're both mentioned that in that order in the Tenth Amendment. Now, do you don't want to know why he called them stupid? There it is. Whoops. This is Justice Stevens talking for the other four. Justice John Paul Stevens. He's still on the court. If Congress believes that such a statute will benefit the people of the nation and serve the interest of cooperative federalism better than an enlarged federal bureaucracy. We know how they hate that. They don't want those. They don't have them anywhere, do they? We, the United States Supreme Court, we should respect both its policy judgment and its appraisal of its constitutional power. Sounds reasonable, huh? Now do you know why Scalia said empty, formalistic reasoning of the highest order? Because that, my friends, is completely 100% opposite of how our government is supposed to operate. Our government has checks and balances everywhere. And the greatest check and balance you can have are local peace officers who protect you from the infringements and the tyranny and the incursions of the federal government. And if you don't have that, you're going to lose. And if we do have it, we win. What are we talking about winning? Oh, just that little thing called American freedom. Now let's go back. I've got to play this. And this should, answer, this should clear up a lot of things for you right here.
and looking at the Constitution in my right hand, I saw no similarities. And I still don't. That there are two separate uh, houses, the House of Representatives and the, and the U.S. Senate and a President, that's about the only similarities you'll see in the Constitution now. Because what they do and on a daily basis is all unconstitutional. It just doesn't make any sense anymore. And why would we even go along with this anymore? Why would we put up with this? We don't have to put up with it. It's not how it was intended to be. And somewhere in the States, there has to be people with the courage to stand and say, we're not doing it here anymore. We're simply not going along. And if you guys can't get it, well then, we're going to have a real standoff. Now the state of Utah is now using the principle of eminent domain to take land back away from the federal government. Wow. And I spoke recently in, um, in Oklahoma, and they had me there before the state legislature. And one of them told me that if they are, when they start trying their state sovereignty plans, and the federal government threatens to withhold funds, that they have initiated legislation, and I don't think it's going to pass. I'm not, I don't have any visions of grandeur with that. But they are actually proposing that the state of Oklahoma would collect all federal income taxes and all federal taxes within the state and pass on to D.C. what they think they need. That goes back to what you were saying. Quit sending money to the beast. Alan Keyes said, and I quote, and this is in my book, uh, my first book, For My Cold Dead Fingers, Why America Needs Guns, and that book is available on my website as well, sheriffmac.com. You get a lot of information off of there. But he said, the only difference between today's slavery and the slavery of the Old South is that at least the plantation owners paid for the chains. <laughs> Folks, we've got to stop paying for the chains. You can't keep being free and paying for your own demise. And somewhere, somehow, we've got to have leadership that knows and understands that. And man, oh man, I'm telling you, the possibility of Sam Moore being your governor here should excite you to no end. There's some real possibilities there. No, it's not just a possibility. If he gets in, state sovereignty will be restored to this state. I know it.